Hi, hi, hello and welcome to, you guessed it, another video. And in today's one, I'm going to be showing you how to build a complete ChatGPT for iOS. Now we've built a couple ChatGPT apps, but this one is going to be complete. It's going to have authentication with Firebase. I'm going to show you how to create different chats and store them on Firebase, and then also how to use different ChatGPT models within the same application. I'm going to break this up into two to three videos. And in this one, I'm gonna cover how to set up authentication so we can have a user and then be able to store different chats based on the user that's signed in. So let's jump into it and create an Xcode project. I've already gone ahead and created mine. And the first thing we're gonna do is build our authentication view. So let's go ahead, create a new. I'll make sure I've got Swift UI selected, auth view. And for that, I also want to create an auth view model. And finally, I will also have an auth service. Now I'll go through which functions go into which one of these classes as we progress through building the app. I just wanna grab these together and group them, put this under authentication. Now let's go ahead and build the UI. Now the auth view is going to be pretty simple, but I do have a way that I like to build my authentication flows. I like to keep it pretty simple and try to keep it to one view. Obviously there are a million ways to build authentication flows, but it probably is one of the most complicated parts of an app. So I like to keep it to one view and only present the email and a button. Now what I then do is I allow the user to enter in the email and I do a check for whether or not the user exists. In either case, I'm going to show the password field, but depending on whether or not the account exists, I'll either create a new user or just sign in the existing one. So let's try build that out. We'll start off with two text fields and a button. So let's go ahead and build that. Let's start off with a VStack and inside the VStack, I'm going to have a little title. I'll call this chat GPT iOS app. And then I'll also have my text field and this will have the title and text. So this is going to say email and I'll bind this to our email text. And this is where we're going to jump into our view model. Let's go ahead and quickly create our auth view model. And inside that I'm going to create a published variable, which is email text. I'm also going to create one that is our password text. Make sure these are both of type string. Make sure it conforms to observable object. And then in our auth view, I'll create an observed object instance of our view model. And now here I'm going to bind to view model dot email text. Make sure our dollar sign goes before our view model. And then I'll create a secure text field. And this will be for our password. So this will say password and bind this to our view model dot password text. And then we'll create a button the action for the button is going to be view model dot authenticate, which we haven't created yet. And the label is just going to be text, which says login. All right, so let's go ahead and create this function in our view model. And there we have it. Now we should have no errors here, but what I also wanna do is I'll just go ahead and declare the instance in here so I don't have to worry about it in my preview. Oh, just realized I need to make sure I give these empty string values and wait for the preview to start loading up. And there we go. So we have our email, our password and our login button and then a little title up there. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and style these so it looks a little prettier, but you can skip past this if you're not really interested in styling. So for my text field, I'm going to add some padding. I'm going to give it a background color of color.gray with an opacity of 0.1. I'm also going to turn off text capitalization. So auto capitalization, I'll set that to never. And I also want to give it a corner radius. So I'll clip to shape rounded rectangle of corner radius 12. I'm going to copy this styling here, paste that on our secure text field, give my entire V stack some padding. So we pad those edges around the side and then give this a font of title and bold and then make the button stand out with a foreground style of white background of color blue and padding of course before our background again around the corners corner radius let's say eight or maybe even 12. i also like to change the style to continuous and then we have it so we basically have the ui now for us to add our email our password and then log in now we go to manage the logic where we check whether or not the user already has an account and if they do we'll go ahead and log them in if they don't we'll create an account for them so the first thing we wanna do is jump over to our authentication view model and add a few more published variables. The first thing we wanna do is check whether or not we have a loading state. So var is loading and we'll set that equal to false because of course nothing's loading at the beginning. The next one that we wanna have is whether or not the password is visible. So is password visible? 
And this will be once we've already checked if the user exists or not. And the final one is to check whether or not the user exists. So published var user exists. And again, this equals to false at the moment. Now to authenticate, we're going to be using Firebase and we haven't imported the Firebase library yet. So let's go ahead and do that. What we also want to do is create a Firebase project. If you haven't already created a Firebase account, go ahead and create one with your Google account and then go to console in the top right corner. From there, you'll be able to create a new project. And I'm just going to call this complete chat GPT app and then continue. I'm going to turn off analytics and create the project. And we just wait for the Firebase project to complete. Now for our project, we're going to be using Firebase authentication. So all services will also be using Firestore database. And I think that's pretty much it. There are other features that you can use. Firebase has a huge range, but this, this is what we're going to focus on. So let's continue. And because we were using iOS, we're going to add an iOS app. So we'll add an iOS app. Make sure you add in your bundle ID. Grab that from your application here. So I go to sign in capabilities, grab the bundle identifier, pop it in here and then register the app. Once that's finished registering, download the Google service info plist. So make sure you grab that from your downloads, pop that in your app folder. I have another one saved, so I just need to make sure that it's named like this. And then we're going to want to grab the GitHub URL for the Swift package. So let's copy that, go next. And from here, I'm just going to skip the rest of this because we don't actually need this. And I'll go to console. Let's jump into our app, say file, add packages, and let's add the Firebase package up to next major version and add the package. Now this one takes a bit of time, so let's head back over to Firebase while this loads. So over here, I'm going to go to build and jump over to the authentication tab. In this video, we're only going to set up email authentication, although in a future video, if you're interested, I can do sign in with Apple. Although I think I will show that in a coming video, just not for this app. So we'll get started and then I'm going to want to select the email sign in not the email link, it's a bit different. So email and password and enable email password and save. And there we go. Now we're ready to use email password authentication inside our app. Now when this pops up, we're going to want to scroll through until we get to Firebase Auth. And although this is for another video, let's just select it now. We're going to choose Firebase Firestore Swift and Firebase Firestore. Now the way our app is going to handle authentication is through our auth view model and our auth service. So the main functions that will be interacting with Firebase will be in our auth service. And that's going to be the check if a user exists function and also the login function. So let's build that into our auth service and then I'll show you how to connect that to the view model. So let's create our auth service class. Here we want to import Firebase Firestore and we also want to import Firebase auth. Let's create a check user exists function and then also our login function. Now the login is going to handle creating a user or logging in. Now for our check user exists function, we're going to take in an email of type string and it's going to be an asynchronous function and it's going to throw and also return a Boolean for whether or not the user exists. And before we do this, let's create our database reference. And so we'll say let document snapshot is equal to db.collection users dot where is equal to and the field is going to be email is equal to email dot count and we'll say let count equal to document snapshot dot get aggregation from the server dot count and because this is an asynchronous function we want to try await and then we'll just return count is greater than zero and make sure we convert that to an int. And of course, if there's more than one of these items, then we do have a user that exists. Now this is the function to log in our user. So let's fill this in as well. We'll pass in our email of type string and our password of type string. And this one is also going to be asynchronous and it throws. And this one's going to send back an auth data result and make that optional. We're going to check that the password is not empty. And if it is, we're going to return nil. We also want to pass in whether user exists. And here we'll check if user exists, then auth.auth.sign in with, and this is going to be email and password. So it's going to be email, password, and we're just going to return try await. So we'll send this back. Else, and if the user doesn't exist, we're going to return try await 
auth.createUser with email and pass in the email and the password. And that's pretty much what we need to be able to log in our user. So let's go over here and then for our authenticate in the view model, we're going to say is loading is equal to true. So we're going to kick that off. We'll then create a task so we can run our asynchronous functions. And then of course a do catch so that if anything does fail, we can catch those errors and handle those accordingly. If we do catch an error, let's print that error. And also is loading equals false. And then we want to check if the password is visible because if the password is visible, that means we want to log the user in. Otherwise, if it's not, we want to check if the user exists. So if password visible, so if is password visible, we're going to log in the user. So we'll say let result equal to auth service, which we haven't created yet. So let's say let auth service equal to auth service. And then come back here and say auth service dot login user email password text and user exists will be user exists. So we'll pass that in. And this of course has to be a try await. And then we'll have await main actor dot run. I'm going to check the result, make sure there actually is a result. Otherwise we'll just return. And then here we're going to update the app state, which we haven't created yet, but the app state is what will manage whether or not the user is logged in. And this way we're able to show the dashboard view or the, like, the list of chats if the user is already logged in or we send them to the authentication page if they're not. And otherwise, if the password is not visible, we're going to say let user exists equal to try await auth service dot check user exists with email text. And we can basically just assign this actually to our variable and then say is password visible equals to true because of course we want to show the password is visible at any point and then we're going to say is loading equals to false. Now the last thing we want to do here is create our app state and that's going to pretty much manage the state of the application. So let's create an app state and we're going to say class app state and of course this has to be an observable object. I'm going to keep track of the current user so I'm going to say var current user of type user and make sure I import Firebase auth. I also here want to import SwiftUI and import Firebase in general. I'm going to create an initializer and we need to make sure that in our initializer, we actually init or configure Firebase. Otherwise we can't use Firebase if it's not configured. So we'll say Firebase app.configure. And when this shows, we're going to check if our current user exists. So if let current user equal to auth, dot auth dot current user then we're going to say self dot current user equal to current user and we'll also create a variable for whether or not the user is logged in so is logged in of a boolean and this will return current user is not equal to nil now we need to put our app state in our application here so we'll go to our app we'll say at observed object var app state of type app state and we'll say if app state dot is logged in, then we'll show the content view, which we'll change later. Else, we want to show the auth view and pass in the environment object, which is going to be our app state. And we need to make sure we actually instantiate this. And let's start back at our auth view to make sure we have our environment object, which is app state of type app state. And then our view model will make sure that this takes in the app state and pass that back into here. So this will need app state and we'll pass in app state. And then here, we're going to update our app state. We're going to say app state dot current user is equal to result dot user. And then I'm going to build and run. And we hope that everything works the way we expect it to. So we have our chat GPT iOS app. Oh, one thing I realized is we're actually showing the password even though we didn't want to yet. So let me just head back to the auth view. And I'm going to say if view model dot password, so is password visible? And then I'll show. And then I also want to say if view model dot is loading, I want to show a progress view. Else, if it's not loading, then I'll show the button. So we don't actually have anything happening while it's loading. I'll build and run now. And so we'll say mazen at mazen.com, login, we got an error. All uh, right, so the error is happening because I actually haven't set up Firestore. So let's head over to our Firebase console jump over to the left and in build, we also want to go to Firestore and we say create database. I'm going to start it in test mode, which lets me read and write, but do read into the uh, read and write rules. 
and just enable and let that provision the cloud firestore database wait for it to set up the security rules and also i noticed there's an error here where it says publishing changes from the background thread and all we have to do is say await main actor dot run and move this into here and just so we can check whether or not it found a user or it's asking us to create a new one i'm going to add a condition in here so i'm going to say view model dot user exists login otherwise create user i'm going to build and run that and it says create user so we know that the user doesn't exist i'm just going to say mezzan abcd create user and now we've entered our application so it signed us in it's assigned our current user and now it knows that we're logged in if i build and run now again i'll notice that i jump straight to the content view and that's because it's logged in and now we're ready to start implementing our chats and that's how you implement authentication with Firebase. And now we're going to use that to implement the rest of our ChatGPT app. So if you're ready, let's jump into the next video where we build the entire UI for this chat app. If you're ready, let's get into it. Peace. I don't care about your stories. I don't care about